Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'd like to welcome you to my craft room. My name is Yvette Qualley. I like to create craft tutorials for beadwork, paper crafting, journaling, and more. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make uh, some page tabs. And I'm using some Edith Holden book pages here, but you can use any tabs that you have. Um, so this is what we're going to be making are these tabs like on the journal here. And um, I do not have a whale tail punch, so the, the Stampin' Up! whale tail punch is what this is made from. And I do not have that punch, so I bought these pages on Etsy. And I'll put a link in the description where I got them. And what I have done here is gone ahead and prepped a few, and I'm going to make one uh, on camera here. Well, I'm going to make all of these on camera, but it'll kind of show you. So you... First thing you need to decide is which side of the paper you want to have. Now, if you don't have um, any of these punches, then you can just use a piece of cardstock folded over in a rectangle shape or a round shape or use a round punch or a scallop punch to make the tab. So basically, uh, you want it to open up so that it goes onto the page and then the dangle will hang off from that. Okay, so the first part that I had to decide was which side of the tab that I wanted to show. So I've done that here. Some of it has writing on it. Some of it has florals. So I went ahead and chose which ones I wanted to do. You're going to need either eye pins, which have the little hole in the bottom, like here, or a straight pin, which has a little uh, blunt end on there. And then you're going to need some jump rings and so i had uh, these eye eye pins and that's what i'm going to use so as you can see they're not straight so we're going to have to straighten them out as we go but i'm a firm believer in using what you have so if you don't have that you can use a wire i'm going to grab some over here if i can and uh, this is a 20 gauge wire and if you have that, you can use that as well. So I just like to use these because I had a bunch of them and I need to use them up. So as you can see on our sample here, let me grab that journal again. At the bottom down here, you can see that each one of these has a little swirl on the bottom. So I'm going to show you how to make that. I just wanted to add that on instead of having the little loop here because normally these are made for dangles and then you hang something off that but I didn't want a dangle with a dangle on a journal page tab. So anyway, I'm going to show you how I did that. You're going to need, so you need the eye pins, you need the tabs or pieces of paper cut into rectangles. You're going to need a pair of round nose pliers. You're going to need a wire cutter, which looks like this. And you're going to need a flat nose plier sometimes, not all the time. The other thing you're going to need is I have a crocodile here, which uh, will is a tool to punch the holes into the paper, and then a grommet, like this one here. And I'm not sure if that's a grommet or an eyelet. I never know how that goes. Anyway, so um, what we're going to do is punch the hole into the card. So I kind of decide which side I want facing up or you know toward the the visual part of the uh, journal page before you turn it and then you have your cutting on each side big hole or a little one and i do the little hole like that and then i have found if i put this in and turn this so instead of taking my tool in and clamping it this way if i clamp it down the other way on the end here, I have a little more tab to do. So we're going to go just like this and we're going to clamp that down. And that's going to leave a nice neat little tab there. And then put my tool away here. Try to put things away as I go so that I don't leave a mess all over. All right. There's that. And then let's go ahead and start with beads. So I have pre-selected some beads here. 
um, I went through each one and made sure that they fit onto the eye pin. Um, and as you can see in our samples here, I just have all different kinds of beads on there. There's no set pattern to them. They're all a little bit different, but if you wanted them all the same, you could do that as well. Just pick out your beads. And I just kind of straighten this with my hand because it's not going to, we're not going to use this whole thing. So how I start out is at the bottom here where I have this little circle. I just go in here and kind of turn this with my round nose pliers. And I'm just making this into a little coil at the bottom. It just gives it a little more decoration um, than if we just use the, the little tab on the end. So just kind of roll that up. And you're kind of pulling on this end as you go so that you can turn that around and these are not perfect but i like it that way and what they remind me of is kind of like the little uh, things on a, a fern i kind of like that all right i don't know the name of those <laughs> so we're going to turn like this just kind of however much you want however little you want and I kind of grab it like this and go around. Now sometimes this will stick up and that's where your flat nose pliers will come in handy. I just go along like this and kind of smooth it out. Now we're going to take this like this and where this curls around, I'm going to come right in here about that far. You're kind of, you're very close to where the end of that curvature is. And I'm just going to bend it up like this. So now you should have something, hope you can see that, that looks like that. And then we're going to put a few beads on there. And again, however many beads you put on, it's kind of up to you. I'm just And I, I don't overthink this, I just randomly sort of grab different uh, shapes, different sizes, and just put it, kind of put them on there. I put it on anywhere from two to about four five or six, usually about no more than five, and uh, we need a little bit of maybe some green on there. Okay, so you got your beads on there now, and I'm going to hold this at the bottom so that it's flat and facing me. I'm going to take my round nose pliers, and I'm going to leave about the thickness of the pliers between the bead and the tool. And I'm going to turn that away like that. And then I'm going to cut this. So that's about, oh, I don't know. Let me measure. I'm terrible at measuring. So that's about three quarters of an inch. Just going to pop that. I'm going to grab the end with my round nose pliers. I'm going to pull it toward me. So this part here. The flat part, you want the loop to go the same direction so that it, it's flat this way, not this way. And I'll show you what I mean when we get done. So we're going to turn this and just turn it around. So by bending it away from itself and then bending it toward itself, you get a nicer loop at the top. And again, see, this is flat, this is flat. So you can sometimes it'll be a little bit off and you can just take this and turn it one way or the other till it's straightened up and how you want it. So I'm going to pull that back, kind of straighten that up a little bit. And again, these are not perfect. I don't like perfect. So if you like perfect, I say practice. <laughs> so we've got that done. So the next part is we're going to take two jump rings and open those up. And I'm going to put one in here. Close it up. Now you always want to open your jump rings uh, side to side. So I'll show you what I mean by that. I'll sacrifice one so you see what I'm talking about. So when you open a jump ring, you want to open it this way rather than some people will stick it in like this and open it this way. And that is what you don't want because see how that's not round anymore and it, you can never get that round again. So 
Again, what you want to do is pull it away and toward you to open it up. You're going to slip that in there. You're going to slip that into the uh, jump ring that you put on the grommet or eyelid or whatever that little thing is. And there you have your dangle. Okay, so we're going to do that again here. And we're going to use this little piece that I cut off. And so this doesn't have a, a round part on the bottom, of course, because we cut it off. So we're just going to start really close to the end. And you're going to wind that around a couple times and you're going to make your own little coil there. And again, pushing that flat as you go along. Okay. And then we're going to take this really close to the curve there and pull it up. So now you have this. And we'll put a couple beads on there. And like I said, I like to do random because if I think about it too much, then I think about it too much and that's not good. So we have about the right amount there. So we're just going to come down again one uh, plier width away from the bead. You're going to pull those beads down so that they're tight to the bottom. Bend it over and then curl it in the other way. Straighten it up. There you have it. I'm going to take a jump ring. <laughs> it doesn't matter which one you do or how you do it. I mean, you could put the jump ring on, put another jump ring on, and then put it through the hole. And if you have a little gap there, you can just squeeze it very gently. And there we have our second tab. Okay, we'll do our third one here. So I'll put a link in the description box uh, to the flip through of that journal that I put these tabs on so you can see how it looks in the whole journal, how that journal turned out. Now I know this hole is big enough because I pre-tested it. Even find the hole. <laughs> That's the next thing. I know that has a hole in it. On to the next. See what I mean? If you overthink it, it becomes a problem. So I don't overthink things. All right. There we go. Take this. Whoops, I forgot to do the bottom. Try that again. I could have left it, but I kind of like the, the spiral. So we're just curling that around. And you'll get the hang of this. I wouldn't, you know, if you don't want to use your nice book pages, just practice with something piece of cardstock or something for your tab so that until you get the hang of it so you're not feeling like you're sacrificing your Edith Holden page. All right, in we go. So I hope you guys give these a try. If you have any questions about my process, you can definitely make a comment or message me. If you'd like to purchase some that I've made, you can message me as well. There we go. I'm going to curl that in. So sometimes people like to watch tutorials, get ideas, and they might not necessarily be their thing. Um, I know beading is not everybody's cup of tea, so I'd be happy to discuss making you some if you're interested. There we have a jump ring. And put our second jump ring on. So the reason I put two on there is uh, one didn't make it hang out far enough. And so two just makes it hang out there a little bit nicer and dangle from the page a little bit better. Okay, we'll use this end again, just curling that end in.
So let me know in the description box. I've had a couple people ask me about how to do the beaded trim that I have on some of the journals that I've done flip throughs of. So if you're interested, let me show you there, on how to do this kind of beadwork on the edging, let me know and I'll think about how I could facilitate that kind of journal. It does take a little while, so not something I can promise doing, but if I had enough interest, I might give it a try. So again, we're just putting on a few beads, leaving enough at the top there so that we can pull that over and curl it back. This one's going to be smaller loop at the top, but that's okay. As long as you can fit a jump ring in it. Straighten it up. We're going to put our jump ring on. Close it up. I get asked sometimes if I work this fast all the time. I, no, I don't, but I don't like my videos to be too long for you, so I kind of try to prepare everything and be organized and get right to the point, so people seem to like that. Um, there we go. All right, so let's take a look at our completed dangles here. I think they turned out pretty cute. And again, uh, we'll just open these up, glue them onto a page, and there you have it. So please hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, I hope to see you in my next video. Have a great day.